buenos días. Buenos días, Adriel. ¿Cómo estás? Muy bien. Gracias. Very good. Yeah. And then they're going to ask me, ¿Cómo está? ¿Cómo está? Usted. Usted. Or you can say, ¿Y usted? Yo estoy muy bien, gracias. Muy contenta. That's our new word for the day. Contenta para las niñas. Contento para los niños. If you are happy and having a good time with your new learning. That's right. Content or happy. So, las niñas, ¿cómo están? You're going to say, estoy, estoy contenta. Contenta. Okay. Los niños, ¿cómo están? You're going to say, estoy contento. <laughs> contento. This is now a niño. Nuestro señor águila. Bueno, ¿qué día es hoy? ¿Qué día es hoy? So, we're going to practice the answer. Hoy es, hoy es miércoles. Miércoles. Mm -hmm. Miércoles is the longest one to say. Es el 18, el 18 de marzo. I guess I should put that on there too in Spanish. If you would like to see the name of the month. Marzo. Marzo. And we'll practice the sentences that we went over yesterday. ¿Qué día fue ayer? We're talking about past tense, yesterday. Do you remember the answer? Um, <laughs> ayer, ayer fue, fue martes. Martes. Muy bien. ¿Qué día es hoy? ¿Qué día es hoy? That's the question. Okay. So the answer starts with hoy. Hoy. Es. Hoy. Es. Hoy es. Um, hoy es. Remember this one? Miércoles. Hoy es miércoles. Hoy es miércoles. Muy bien. ¿Y qué día será mañana? ¿Qué día es mañana? <laughs> yes, so you're repeating the question. So we have to have the question and the answer. ¿Qué día será mañana? The answer starts with mañana. Mañana. Será. Será. Jueves. Jueves. Mañana será jueves. There's miércoles for today. I saw some of my friends' notebooks that they wrote down all the days of the week, and your cursive handwriting was so nice. So I, I'm happy that you're practicing those. ¿Qué más? ¿Qué más? Um, ¿Cómo está afuera hoy? If you can look outside, we're talking about what kind of weather are we having outside. ¿Cómo está afuera? Está nublado. Nublado. Yep, these clouds. are the clouds in the sky. Está, está. nublado. Nublado. Está nublado. No está lloviendo. No está lloviendo. Lloviendo. No, right now. No está nevando. No está nevando. No está nevando. We don't have rain, we don't have snow. Está nublado. Está Hay nublado. nubes. These are the nubes. 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 Muy bien. Um. Okay, let's just do some vocab. That might be fun. We'll just start with whatever things we have here. Okay. Let's start with our eraser helper. This little guy is our águila. 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 Muy bien. Libro. Libro. Un libro. Dos libros. Dos libros. Tres libros. Tres libros. Cuaderno. Cuaderno. Muy bien. Cuaderno. Un cuaderno. Un cuaderno. Dos cuadernos. Dos cuadernos. Tres cuadernos. Gracias. Muy bien, muy bien. Um, let's see, what do you have? I was wondering if you had a pencil. No. <laughs> okay, we'll do some more vocab tomorrow. Not a big deal. Um, one fun thing I thought we could start today are, I have this yoga for your brain, tingle cards, um, then tingle cards. And I thought we could just pick one and um, do that for a minute, and it might be something that you can do during the read aloud. Adriel also likes to sketch um, things that come up in the read aloud or doodle them, like you saw yesterday with her Lava to Life. 
So I am going to read from this in a, in a minute. So one thing you could do, if you can multitask, is the Zen Tangle, or you could sketch something from the story. Okay. This one is called a Cirque Fleur. Is it? Different? It's not on the video. Oh. <laughs> so this is brand new. And let's see how we're going to do it. I'll show you on my you can do it on there. You have your marker or pen. Oh yes, I forgot to say. Whenever I zentangle or doodle, I like to use a permanent marker or a pen. Um, this is one kind of drawing where we don't want to erase. So we're just going with whatever designs we're making. We're going with the flow, basically. And if something doesn't look right, we have to change it. We have to make it part of the whole um, design, the whole art project. Yeah. I said yes. Thank you. Okay. This Cirque Fleur, so I have a permanent, or let's just imagine this is a permanent marker because this would be my notebook. AGL has a marker. You can use your notebook, a piece of paper, a card. You may want to give it to someone later. This one starts with a triangle in the middle. And there's the triangle, three sides, three angles. The next step is to make a circle around that triangle. Any way it comes out, it's just a doodle, right? Okay, you're going to choose one side of your triangle and from that line just extend and make this curly cue design. I don't know if this design has a name. <laughs> I know, you just like call it curly cue. From the next adjacent side of the triangle, that side is also going to extend into a curly cue. And the next side is also the last side is going to extend into a curly cue. So we ended up with three curly cues. So we want to keep doodling from here. We want to fill in the white spaces. In between the curly cues, there is some white space and we want to make little curves here. That kind of match the shape of the circle. And keep filling in with more curves. Until you mostly have filled in the white spaces. There's one circle floor. I love it. And um, we want to eventually fill in all the white space. So we would start with a new triangle, which has a new circle around it. And then keep going from there. Curly cues, curly cues, curly cues. Um, this is just a quick, quick then tangle here. And from there you can continue filling in spaces, you can use colors, you can use shading. Cool, that is done. I'll show you again the card that we used today. Wait, so that you might want to pause and look at that card. Cool. Gracias. Muy bien. Continuamos. Um, with our read aloud. And I, I will hand that over to you in case you do feel like you think you have pillows. We do not have pillows. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're not going to be comfy this morning. Okay. We don't need pillows. <laughs> From lava to life. Let's see what, what happens you? next. Huh? Aguila. El señor Aguila. Um, oh yes, there was a problem with too much oxygen on Earth and in the seas. That's where we stopped reading yesterday. 
with Earth going to die. There's a mass extinction happening with these bacteria because there's too much oxygen. <clears throat> now things got worse. Hungry bacteria began to eat each other. Predators liquefied their prey and then drank them. What a gross, gooey mess. Big bacteria devoured small bacteria. Feisty little bacteria were equally fierce. This just makes me think of how, how you could sketch. It's just a big battle of bacteria. <laughs> Some little bacteria burrowed inside the big bacteria and liquefied their guts from the inside. Sometimes little ones multiplied inside the big ones until there were so many little ones that the big ones exploded. Ew. I realized that a whole new kind of life had just come into being. They were life eaters. Hmm. They could only survive by eating other living things. The sunlight eaters weren't eating each other. They didn't need to. Their energy came from sunlight, air, water, and rock. I'm sure I don't have to tell you whether you're a sunlight eater or a life eater. Eating one's neighbor was more than rude. One part of me was killing another part of me. What good could possibly come of this mess? I did not know. Here's a picture. Um, remember that this book is called, From Lava to Life, The Universe Tells Our Earth Story. So the narrator in this book, in the story, is the universe. And whenever it says I, that is, that is the universe telling its story. Two battling bacteria tried to turn each other into a liquid lunch. Excuse me. Instead, they merged into a new earthling, a new form of life called a eukaryote. That's a long word, eukaryote. But rather than let its DNA float loosely around the entire cell, as bacteria do, this new being stashed its DNA inside a protective packet called a nucleus. Having a nucleus in the cell as a control center made eukaryotes very different from bacteria. This was really something incredible that happened, and it was about 2,000 million years ago. Doesn't that mean 2 billion? Yes, I don't know what 2,000 million? Yeah, it would have to be 2 billion if I am not mistaken. Okay. Meanwhile, poisonous oxygen clouds kept closing in. Eukaryotes had many new talents, but coping with oxygen was not one of them. Earth's disaster was turning into a mega disaster, far worse than anything humans have ever seen. Everything was dying off left and right. Bacteria were dying, eukaryotes were dying, oxygen was poisoning everything. Something had to happen. Well, uh, I might not have showed you that picture. This is an artist's rendering of a cell with that part in the center called the nucleus that is protecting the DNA. Earth's oceans were filled with zillions of dying eukaryotes and dying bacteria. Then, a whippersnapper of a bacteria turned oxygen poison into power. Who are these tiny powerhouses? They're called mitochondria. At first, the eukaryotes and mitochondria were fierce enemies, always turning each other into delectable, gooey meals. Then something very strange happened. To escape the predators, the mitochondria hid inside eukaryotes. They mopped up the oxygen poison and turned this oxygen into energy for them both. In exchange, eukaryotes protected the mitochondria from predators. Now that's an awesome partnership. 
Mitochondria, once free-living bacteria, live inside all plants and animals that are alive now, even you. Every second, your mitochondria engines are burning oxygen to power you. It's true, bacteria created your oxygen atmosphere and they breathe oxygen for you. Do you see why I love them so much? Here's a pretty painting of some of those eukaryotes and bacteria. And I think we will stop there and we'll do our meditation. I should have asked you if you needed more time to sketch. Oh. All right, would you like to show the class your work? And um, I'll get the camera. It's just a bunch of cells. And this one exploded. And then um, that's a eukaryote. This is a cell eating another cell. And that's where the mitochondria like went inside another cell. Um, if you can turn the lamp off, I will grab the timer. Okay, I have not gotten any suggestions for longer meditation time, so we will stick with one minute and ten seconds this morning. Um, nope. Can't see anything now, huh? Okay, we'll do it that way. <laughs> I thought our candle was going to be brighter. Um, were you telling me something about uh, what was there? Um, the progressive relaxation? Are you telling me that you can try something? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So okay. We can do that. Okay. We've done it in our class before. So if you'd like to join us in this relaxation, um, do you want me to say it? Or do you want to say it? Okay. So starting at the top of your head, you're going to squeeze your face and your muscles, your neck, and then relax them. Oh, that's how we do it. Oh. <laughs> then um, tense up your shoulders real high, real tight, squeeze, <sighs> relax. Uh, make fists, and tense up your arms, you can cross them, you want to tense, Squeeze real tight. Relax. That's good. Um, see if you can tense your belly muscles. So if you if you touch it, it feels like a wall there. Those muscles. Relax. Um, tighten your legs. See if you can even curl your toes up. Squeeze and relax. All right. So we might do it. Do this before where this was on camera and then that's good. Move your picture back over. All right, we are ready to begin. If you are ready to begin, Do you feel a little bit better? I did hear my phone go off during that and I had to ignore it. Sometimes you'll hear sounds when you're doing your meditation and you can just yeah, just hear it and ignore it. I did hear um, some birds chirping outside too, but they do didn't bother me. So um, thank you for joining us and we hope you have a good day.
Y nos vemos mucho más. Bye. Hasta luego.